Well, it's a crunch time as we get closer to local decision 2022, election day coming up on November 8th. And in Spring Lake Park, Anthony O'Neill is running for city council. He joins us here at the North Metro TV studios. Anthony, good to meet you. Thanks you as for well. stopping by. Uh, tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. It's your first foray into politics. It is, yes. So I grew increasingly concerned as, uh, as the taxes around my town continued to grow and grow, uh, especially after they built a couple of complexes there that were slated to reduce that and uh, figured I should give it a shot, give it a go. I like to listen to people, like to help people. Went to be a biomedical engineer for that reason and uh, figured I could uh, use my skills to, to help the city as well. What are you hearing from the residents? I know you're out knocking on doors. Mm -hmm. uh, you're trying to put some signs up. I, I'm sure there's a lot of interaction. What are they telling you? Uh, you know, it's a little bit of 50-50. A lot of people are saying they feel great, they feel safe, they're fine with the way things are, and then other people are saying that there needs to be a change. They need to have uh, see a little more uh, action from the police force. Uh, they'd like to see their property taxes come down. So it kind of depends on who you're talking to and where. What's your definition of public safety? Public safety, people should be able to feel comfortable to play out in their yards, leave their garage doors open, not worry about someone walking up in there and trying to rummage through their stuff. Do you feel like Spring Lake Park is a safe place to live right now? Safe in terms of physical safety, yes. In terms of thefts and crimes and things like that, no. Uh, just the other day across the street, somebody walked into somebody's garage. Uh, they opened the door, scolded them, and they ran off. Uh, you see constantly on the Ring Neighbors app that people are showing up in the middle of the night, jiggling doorknobs, things like that. So I think we need to crack down on that a little bit here. Yeah, and I know you're a staunch supporter of the uh, police department. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what will you do to be an ally of Spring Lake Park PD? I'm not exactly sure at the moment, but uh, definitely talk with them, see what their takes on things are, see if there's anything that the city can do to help support them in terms of finances or maybe public support, maybe outreach programs, something where we can get people to meet the police officers and feel a little more comfortable with them. So as you uh, navigate your way through your first ever election, What's that been like? Has, has there been a learning curve? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. It's a lot easier than you think it would be. You mean, you go over to the city, you say you want to run, and then you start talking to people. And that's all there is, really. Get your name out there a little bit. Was there a magical moment when you said, wow, I want to do this, or was it a process? Uh, it was kind of a magical moment. I'd been considering something like this for a little while, and then the flyer from the Spring Lake Park City came out and said they had two city council boards open, uh, positions open on the board, and I was like, well, you know, I think this is the time. You've been in Spring Lake Park for 33 years. I, I'm, I'm guessing mm -hmm. you're passionate about the city and mm -hmm. it's, it's in your DNA, really. Yeah, no, it's a great town. Uh, my parents moved there when I was three. My wife and I bought the house from them when they retired and moved out of town, uh, raising my two boys there right now. So I'd like to stick around for a while yet. Uh, what's it been like uh, learning about things like putting up signs? I know there's sticker shock sometimes on, there on is, the cost of definitely, political yeah. signs. <laughs> yeah, no, we ended up making our own because, you know, I went online, tried to buy a few of them, and for a handful of them, it was quite expensive. We got the materials to build twice as many signs for less than half the price. Uh, so the wife and I started making them, and hopefully I can get a few more of them out in uh, some friends' yards here in the upcoming time. But uh, reading about the plots and where you can put them in terms of easements, don't want to be a nuisance on the corners, got to have permission to put them there, all that. So they give you that paperwork when you apply. Uh, one of the lightning rod topics, yet everyone agrees on it, is Minnesota State Highway 65. I know you drove up mm -hmm. 65 from <laughs> Spring Lake Park to our studios here in Blaine. Uh, it's something that needs to be fixed. It will be. It's just a matter of when. Where do you stand on all that as far as funding and, and getting 65 where it should be for Spring Lake Park? In terms of where it should be for Spring Lake Park, I think it functions quite well. In terms of the amount of cars that it has to move through at any given time, it could probably be improved upon. I know the on-ramps and off-ramps can get a little sketchy at times, and depending on where you are on it, even in Spring Lake Park, that the ramps are quite different from intersection to intersection. So if we could get some kind of universality going across there, I think it'd be a lot easier for people. people. Um, I've seen proposals at times where people have talked about building bridges across it where there wouldn't be any... Um, where it would be more clover leaves on and off all the time. I don't know if that's reasonable in terms of zonings and things like that. Uh, but there is definitely some work that can be done to it to improve its flow. And when 65 is upgraded, that should have a spinoff on local businesses and the residents, shouldn't it? Oh, absolutely. The easier it is to get into Spring Lake Park and have some people stopping in and spending some money in the town as they're passing through, potentially going from the southern part of Minneapolis up to the northern part of the state to try and enjoy that. That, that would be beneficial for us, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's a good point. I mean, Spring Lake Park probably for some people is a drive-through city mm -hmm. going from point A to point B. How can you get them to stop? 
and check out the amenities that you know the city has. Yeah, yeah. Well, there would be some more signage talking to the people who are living, uh, not living, sorry, the businesses that are closer up to the highway there, see if we can get a little more advertisement, maybe make it a little more appealing for people to want to stop in and check it out. Um, I know currently, like uh, just south of Osborne, it's turned into more uh, gas station area right there and car wash versus it used to be there was a small business there. Um, so we'll have to see what we can do to, to get some attention from people as they're coming on through. Hy-Vee is already anchored in Spring mm -hmm. Lake Park. It's the big fish, so to speak. Do you feel fortunate because Hy-Vee was going to go to Blaine, it was going to go to Maple Grove, and they've pulled out for various business reasons? But you got them. You have to feel good about that. Yeah, no, it's a great store. Yeah, no, it definitely draws in some attention. There's, you know, it's got a great gas station there and massive. I don't think I've ever seen it full. Um, and then the, the store itself has some great amenities to it. It's got Wall Burgers in it there. It's got a nice restaurant. It's got the deli, uh, the liquor store attached to it. I mean, it, it's a one-stop shop. Uh, smaller businesses luring in uh, other, other companies or businesses, do you, are you in favor of that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's the, the way of the world in the U.S. here. I mean, for the, it's the free market, right? So, uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about open spaces, parks, green spaces? I know... You're a guy that likes to get in the uh, great outdoors. What do you feel mm -hmm. about that? Parks are great. I think that we could do some upkeep. I know Able, that's, uh, I think it was slated to get some work. I don't know if it has just yet. We'll have to see how that's going if, we, if I get into the city council. But I think it's a great area. I see a lot of people using it, a lot of kids there, sledding in the winter. I think it's fantastic. And that would be a priority, I'm assuming, for you, since you do like to get outside and... Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. we got to get kids playing outdoors yeah. a little more. I mean, the technology is great and it's here to stay, so they should learn how to use it. But they also got to be kids, run around, play, have some fun, scrape their knees. How do, if you're on the council, how would Spring Lake Park recruit people to, uh, you know, become part of the city and recruit staff members and things like that? I mean, how do you convince them this is a place to come and work and maybe live? Well, if, I mean, if they're here and living now, it's, it's you know, come and help your community you know, to see what it's all about, see how it can be improved, see how we can help other people. Uh, in terms of luring them in, I think it's a great place to be. Uh, it's a nice community. People are always very friendly. I don't think I've ever had a bad interaction talking to somebody in Spring Lake Park. So just try to encourage uh, more neighborhood, neighborly activities. Hopefully with COVID ending here, we can, you know, bring back that, you know, um, it's in the fall. It's the, you know, take back the night block parties, things like that. Get people out and talking again. Uh, you work at Boston Scientific, so you have a medical background. Uh, can that be a positive for you if you're on the council? Can that help you navigate the, uh, the waters of city council? Absolutely, yeah. So my job currently, I'm in post-market surveillance, and so it's helped me to kind of, uh, what I have to do is dig through the noise and see what's really happening. So in terms of city council, I think it would be great to apply those skills. Is it one person raising, raising a ruckus, making all the noise over here, or does that what the city actually needs? And so trying to filter through that and actually help people, I think, would, would be beneficial. You know, when talking to other candidates, they, they focus on, hey, I can't do it alone if I'm on the council. I'm going to have to come together, build bridges. Mm -hmm. I might not get exactly what I want, but uh, is that something that you are aware of going into this? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I know it's, it's a city council. It's not a one-man show. If you go in there and you want to be bullheaded and push people around, nothing's going to get done. Uh, I think we all have the same goal of wanting to help people and wanting to help the city. So I, I think coming together and just coming to an agreement as to how to best do that is the best option. So in your 33 years in Spring Lake Park, you, you've seen the city literally change, mm -hmm. um, you know, almost dramatically the, the demographics are different. It's way more diverse than it used to be. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like Spring Lake Park is welcoming to everybody that it's, it's, it's a city that embraces diversity? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And that's a good thing in your eyes. Oh, idea. absolutely, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. No, diversity okay. is great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it yeah. gives you a lot of different, uh, maybe restaurants or uh, mm -hmm. things to sample, perhaps that small business we're talking about. Absolutely, yeah. No, bringing other cultures together, is, is, it's fantastic. I'm not saying anybody should be out on their own and having their own little sub-communities. The world's a melting pot here, and I think that's a fantastic way to go about it. And yeah, the city has changed greatly since I've been here. When I was a child, I mean, where the, the courtyard of uh, Spring Lake Park, the little townhomes, that was all woods. Hmm. Uh, the lily putt, I mean, that was just more recently, but there's been a lot of big changes, and I think it's been good so far. Uh, you want to focus also on keeping that budget in check and being fiscally uh, responsible. Am I right about that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, I'd like to see property taxes come down a little bit if possible. I know with one of the most recent condominiums they built, that was kind of slated as a large income for the city. They were going to be able to curb property taxes, but they've gone up and up since then. So I'd kind of like to get in there. Um, 
use my auditor background and see if I can audit the budget and see what's been going on for the past few years, see where we can cut some unnecessary costs. Uh, how would you describe Spring Lake Park coming out of a pandemic where inflation right now is sky high? How would you describe the state of the city? I think the city is doing really well with it. Uh, even with COVID, there was still a lot of people out and about walking around. And granted, some people wanted to keep a little more distance than others, and that's perfectly respectable. Everyone's got their own health concerns and needs. Uh, but I, it didn't slow down very much from what I noticed over in my neighborhood. So if you are elected, what would be the top two or three things you would try to tackle as a council member? Uh, definitely unnecessary spending. Try to bring down some property taxes. Try to bring in a little more revenue potentially for the city. You have people traveling through it and then support the police officers, definitely. They've had a tough go over the past few years. Yeah, and I'm guessing building bridges from between the police and the, and the residents. Oh, the absolutely. city says they want to yeah. do that, but that would be part of the, uh, the equation, am I right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. No, I love how the Columbia Heights Fire Department, they do the, the, the big thing every year where the kids come in, they get to play with the fire trucks and all that, and then even when, uh, uh, when we were doing the, the block parties in the fall there, they were coming around letting the kids play with the fire trucks. I think we need to get the police officers to do the same thing. Let them all know that, you know, when you see a police officer, it's like, oh no, uh, did I do something wrong? It's like, no, they're our friends, they're here to help. So you've been in the city for over three decades. Mm -hmm. You obviously like it. Uh, what, what's the top selling point in your opinion? <clears throat> Location, it, it's a great neighborhood. Uh, feel safe in it, definitely. Uh, I do close my garage door, but I mean, that's, you know, that's just me. Um, <laughs> it, it's just great. Uh, it's got everything around it you need. I, I can walk to everything we need, you know, whether it be Northtown Mall, Hy-Vee now. Um, it, it's fantastic for locations. Northtown is not within the city limits of Spring Lake Park, but it's basically right next door it, on the it's fringe. It's rubbing on it, yeah. <laughs> so uh, it, it's not your city's decision. It's plain, no. but what would you like to see happen from the Spring Lake Park perspective at Northtown? Uh, in terms of what, sorry? Just the development, or what would you like to see there that, that would benefit Spring Lake Park? I think it's great. I think they need to put a little more effort into bringing back like a nice restaurant there, uh, maybe expanding on some of the stores a little bit. I know they say they used to say they had hundreds of stores inside, but that was with like the little kiosks and things like that. I know Amazon's kind of taken over the world here, but people do still like to stop and buy things. Is there anything you've learned since you've jumped into these political waters that maybe you didn't think uh, was going to be something you would have to figure out? Uh, no, it's, it all seems like standard for the course right now, yeah. I'll have right. to see when I, if I get in there, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, one last chance to talk to our viewers and tell them why uh, Anthony O'Neill is the right guy for Spring Lake Park City Council. Well, thank you. Uh, I think it would be great to get in there, get a fresh perspective. I'm not saying that anyone's been in there for too long, but getting a, a turnover of things, I'm a, a supporter of having term limits and things like that, so that you can get some fresh perspectives on things. Um, that's all I got. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Very good. Well, thanks for stopping by and uh, good luck on November 8th. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Very good. He's Anthony O'Neill running for city council in Spring Lake Park. This is Local Decision 2022.